everybody. Welcome back to A Higher Future. I'm Yumi Simonetti and joined as always by Nicole Gravania. Hey, Doc, how are you? Hi, Yubi. Who are we talking with today? Uh, so we have an exciting guest because um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the company that she works at called Thumbtack. Uh, Deanna Smith is the global head of diversity, equity, and inclusion there. So first of all, welcome to the show. How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for having me and looking forward to chatting with you. Absolutely. Well, I, I wanted to kind of kick off with first, for those people who don't know what Thumbtack is, mm-hmm. uh, to talk a little bit about that. But also, you know, what, what I'm really fascinated by is um, y- you are really redefining, in, in my opinion, the, the role of the, these global chief diversity, equity and inclusion officers. And I want to kind of hear about your approach to that, because, um, you know, I think DEI as an industry, right, is sort of undergoing this, I don't know if reckoning is the right word, but a necessary change and shift in perspective. Um, and I think what you all are doing is is that right direction. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Um, again, thank you all so much for having me. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about Thumbtack for those who are not familiar. So at Thumbtack, we um, are a we provide a platform that connects uh, folks that need a service of some kind with professionals that provide that service. Um, so we have a, a large percentage of uh, people that are focused on their homes, right? So uh, if you need a plumber or you're planning to do a pool or anything from even painting or or cleaning, et cetera, um, we have those professionals on our platform. And so you would come in, tell us what you're looking to do, the area you're in, and we will instantly connect you with professionals in your area uh, where you can get quotes, et cetera, and choose a person that works best for you. So that is what our platform does. So that's kind of the customer's experience. For the professional, it's it's amazing because you um, being a part of Thumbtack, you know, have a profile where you're able to share with the world what you do. Um, You can have pictures of the work that you do, tell more about um, what you do and the type of customers that typically come to you. And it is really a marketing portal for those folks to find um, people to do jobs for. So it's a great for us because we're that middle um, person, quote unquote, of the platform, connecting uh, people that have a need with people who are amazing and skilled and able to service their need. It sounds like you spend a lot of time um, with folks who have who have their own businesses that are tradespeople, and it, it reminds me of a story. I was once working um, with some folks that were at Yale, and so these are people who were very highly educated, PhDs, and they um, they were really looking at what they what else they could do with their degrees as opposed to what they could do in academia, and the conversation came up about. Um, this one black man said to me, you know, my grandfather, he knew how to hustle and he knew how to make his own business and sell whatever he needed to sell. He said, are you telling me I need to go back to that? Do I need to learn the hustle? And, and so it strikes me that you then have probably a lot of perspective on uh, black folks in America, the middle class and who is doing this hustle. Yeah, that's, um, uh, Wow, it's a really interesting point of view and I completely get it. You know, I think about myself, I'm, I'm from the South. My mom's from Mississippi, my father from Louisiana. I don't know if you get any more Southern than that. Um, <laughs> good food, real I good know, food. exactly. <laughs> um, and so again, my, you know, grandparents and even I remember my great grandfather who was born in 1899 um, that I spent tons of time with him. And so their perspectives on things are so um, different. It was work really, really hard. Um, whether it's creating your own businesses. And what what I I think some people forget also is that, um, you know, when you think about entrepreneurship, it really, really runs deep with with Black people in America for a couple reasons. One, Mm -hmm. we couldn't get jobs, right? And so if you were not tired, able to get a job, you still have a family you have to feed, you had to figure it out. So people we are, have become, and I feel like it's a gift, but I know that there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. You know, we are like um, amazing at making a dollar out of 15 cents, as my mother would say. So, you know, you, you give someone an idea and we're going to figure it out. We haven't had the luxury to not have to figure it out. So I totally understand where that gentleman is coming from because our grand 
grandparents, our great grandparents, they did all of that and invested. And what they've pushed on us is education. Go to college, get your degree, you know, go to medical school, go to law school, you know, all these kind of traditional things uh, that you would think that if you do, that you can just um, go to work, make a good living, make a difference in the world. And so I think that that was, that has definitely been preached to us and their sacrifice was so that we would not have to do that type of work, whatever it was that they were doing. Right? Like my grandmother shares with me about how she cleaned homes for white people in Mississippi, like majority of her life. And she saved money to open a salon and to do, she did all these different things, but it was like, you know, um, she had to do that work to send my mom away to college um, and a boarding school for high school, which were things that were unheard of. And she worked, you know, and so it's because she didn't want my mom to have to do that. So I get where he's coming from. The one thing that I will say though, is that I think that there's a place for both. I think that there is definitely, we have more opportunity now, but you know, the reality of it is we are still in a country that is riddled with systemic oppression. And so no matter how many degrees you get, um, you are still dealing at a, you know, a disadvantage, right? You're still gonna have to hustle a bit. You know, you, you just have to. Um, you know, I went to a great HBCU, Howard University, and and one of the things, you know, when I was a uh, freshman um, in biz, studying business there was like they taught us how we needed to dress, and uh, and then it was a sense of assimilation that was required, and you work ten times harder to be even noticed, right? So we 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 hear all these things. That being said, I do think that there is a place for those who um, are owning small businesses, who are entrepreneurs, who have that natural hustle, who again, I think is not only a gift, sometimes it's a secret weapon. You know, we call it scrappiness now too, right? Where you take that person who hasn't had everything kind of handed to them and they can just figure it out. Um, and I love that. And, you know, even folks I hire on my team, that's so important. And so I do think that there's, a place for that. I also say Thumbtack, one of the things that I love and one of the things I was really attracted to when I was deciding to come to Thumbtack was the fact that we are providing a platform and a marketing tool for those hustlers, right? For those folks yep. who are Hispanic, Black, Asian, whatever, you know, who are trade people, who um, some definitely college educated for sure, others who maybe chose a different route. And so we are making it easier um, not saying it's easy, but making it easier for them to market their service, to connect with customers. And for me, I think that it's super important when I think about the middle class in America, we have a wealth gap, we know that. And like, we're working hard trying to figure that out. It's kind of hard when you like have worked for four or 500 years for free to try to like catch up, right? And in that terms, you have nothing to leave. So you're, you know, it's a whole other conversation and I'm sure all of, you know, we could talk about for hours. But what we can do is if we look at the middle class and we look at those skill sets where folks can still make a very livable, decent wage, they're no longer teaching those in the high school. Um, it's even frowned upon sometime. Um, and so we want people to know that no, having this gift and this talent is like, that is your, that's your skills, that's your gift. Like, let us help you um, share that with the world. So there's nothing like having a gift that is, that can bring you money, feed your family, et cetera, and no one knows about it. So yeah. this is our way of helping with that. I think it's so, I mean, there's so many things in there to unpack because there is sort of this shift away from traditional schooling as we know it, right? You know, the four-year degree, we're kind of shifting back towards the, these trades, right? Like this, this non-traditional pathway, yes. um, which, which is fascinating. And, and I hadn't thought about it until you were speaking, but how technology is sort of enabling us to go back that way. And Absolutely. to your point, Thumbtack, having this whole platform, people didn't have that before. Exactly. And here it is now laid out in front of them. Um, and so there's, there's kind of two parts because one part of it is one, companies have to, you know, really reconsider and mm -hmm. think about what they're looking for, yes. for, for their roles because yes. th there are plenty of people out there. There's plenty of talent. It's not that. It's the companies, you know, on, on this side of things aren't considering, yes. all, you know, how all of these 
other alternative pathways can can really impact a role, even in a much more better, successful way than the way they've been hiring before. But then it's also on the other end of the spectrum, it is, you know, how do we get people to go into those trades yeah. and take those alternative paths, mm-hmm. you know, and, and let them know that, hey, it's, it's, it's not like it used to be. There's a right. lot more support and you're enabled by technology now. You know, we, we keep talking about that with several guests about, you know, this, this, how do we support humans with technology? How do we make it better for them? We Mm. can, and that's the beauty of it. So there's some, man, there's some really cool stuff happening here. I love it. Yeah. It's, um, it's really interesting. I keep, I, you know, one of the things that kind of drives me and, and a lot of people that are, that are working with, um, at Thumbtack and even outside of that is that for black and Hispanics, you know, specifically when I speak about underrepresented, that's kind of what I'm focusing on. But any yep. person, right, who um, hasn't had opportunity, has been kind of shut out of uh, commerce, you know, for lack like, of a better word, et cetera, is that this, where we are with technology right now, if black people, if Hispanic people, if we don't figure out how to become a part of this, how to contribute to, to it, we, you know, I don't know if we can m- make this ground up. I think this will be the hardest ground for us to make up is for us to be left out of all of the growth around technology. AI, mm-hmm. right? And I've, I've done a lot of research and reading around AI about how, you know, a lot of it is not tested on Black, Hispanic, other ethnicities. Right. And so, you know, it doesn't work for me, right? You know, everything from like cameras uh, and I've been really fortunate to have been working with some product inclusion folks from Google, um, as well as um, some other companies and they're doing some really, really interesting work now. But again, it's our usual coming in on the back end, it's broke, um, this doesn't work, like how do we fix it? And um, I think that at Thumbtack and other companies, we have our responsibility. Um, to ensure that the most, um, you know, I always tell people, think about building for the most marginalized person. If you can build for the most marginalized person, all the rest of us will we'll get in where we fit in, right? Because we will be covered in that. Right. Um, as opposed to forgetting about um, people that may not speak English or forgetting about, you know, we had this big conversation the other day about ethnic hairstylists on Thumbtack and how getting leads, um, it's against our discrimination policy to, to, you know, say if a customer's race or et cetera. But for those folks, if they're paying for leads blindly and they're doing a certain type of hair, that's a that's a, a, an issue that we've got to look at so that, mm. you know, those folks are getting the same use of that as their counterparts. And so there there are things like that, that if we, and I got that from using a Thumbtack Pro myself, who shared with me her challenges, how great the platform had been, but she's like, but you know what, there's this one thing. And I'm like, wow. And so those are not always the people we have giving us feedback, you know, on our our products, et cetera. So we're broadening that. And and we understand that our scope um, is much larger and, and we're looking at how do we how do we do that? You know, we, we can't make bias go away. We can work on mitigating it um, and several other things. So yeah, it's it's an interesting time and technology is really enabling us to, you know, we're changing the world literally and like, we've gotta be a part of that. In our last couple of minutes, tell us the future of work at Thumbtack yeah. and how you are making sure that you're not leaving people out, yeah. especially as we get back to the office. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm really, really excited for a couple of reasons. One is that as we were discussing the future of work, um, I, you know, as a leader of DEI, was a part of those conversations initially, you know, early on, et cetera, bringing up again, this is why people need to be in a room that have different viewpoints, things that maybe we may not have thought about otherwise. Um, so I'm very excited because on March 31st, um, Thumbtack, we actually shared or announced that we will be um, embracing to a virtual works model long-term. So obviously we've been virtual for a while, but this is our, what we'll be doing long-term. And so we're, we're thinking about it as virtual first. So everyone will work remotely. Um, we are expanding from just our headquarters, which were San Francisco, Salt Lake City. We also have an office in Toronto and the Philippines. Um, and we are now opening that up nationwide, which is super exciting for me for several reasons. Um, and then in addition to that, though, we, we also understand that there, there is importance of building relationships with your 
colleagues and, you know, some face-to-face -face things that, you know, you can't really accomplish via Zoom. Um, so we are doing a, an annual multi-day event called Camp Thumbtack every year. We'll bring the entire company together and we'll use that time for um, growth opportunities, for, um, you know, product reveals, you know, we're still working on that, but it's going to be a, a great large event. Um, and then we'll also have team events. So we'll have team events two to four times a year. You and your team will get together somewhere. Um, and then we're going to offer Thumbtack libraries and those libraries will be in the cities we already had. Um, and so if you are in San Francisco in a small apartment and you could not wait for this to be over so you could get out of the house and go back out, <laughs> right. we wanna, yes, we want to provide some space for you to be able to do that. But understanding that as we're having meetings, like we're, we're not going to be doing meetings in those libraries. Everyone's still going to be individual on Zoom. Um, you know, and so we didn't do a hybrid, but we definitely have those in-person um, mm -hmm. opportunities as well. So very, very um, exciting about that and, and and quickly I'll just say what how we think that that when we think about our culture we're rebuilding our culture um, we have to our culture was very much built around um, our, our beautiful office spaces and and our kitchen and you know all those great things that um, especially in the valley right uh, where companies are extraordinary and so now we are building rebuilding our culture and what's exciting for me is as, as we're doing that we're doing it with inclusion on the front end we are looking at how do we build this culture? What does it mean to work at Thumbtack? Um, and how do we make sure that everyone feels like they belong, that our workforce reflects our pros on our platform and the community we live in? And it's just a, it's just been a huge opportunity, I think, again, for us as we're rebuilding this to think about diversity on the front end as opposed to what I usually have to do, which is coming in and, and trying to rebuild or fix broken systems that are already having like a disparate impact on people, right? And so yeah. having that front forward view is, is just really exciting for us. I love how you put that. And I think that's a, a perfect way to, to end the conversation is that it has to be those things, diversity, inclusion, equity have to be at the forefront of your strategic thinking and how you're going to build your company into the future of work. It has to be. And, and you know, it doesn't doesn't have to be forced, but you've got to think about those things and everything you talk about, right? Like that's kind of the new way to do it. So awesome. It yeah, yeah, we we are super excited, and I think that um, again, just the way we're thinking about diversity and inclusion at Thumbtack in general, um, it's not just focused on our HR side. We have a more holistic yeah. look, right? And so, part of that holistic work, uh, a huge part of that is you know our future of work and 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 what that looks like. Um, I've become so excited because inclusion now in those principles we've been working on and, and my work for so long on how to make people feel belonging, we need that more than ever now that everyone's remote, regardless of whether they're yep. uh, underrepresented, minority, et cetera. So we are being able to use this skill set and this muscle that we've been you know, already utilizing and looking at how do we um, help our entire employee base um, in that way. And so again, just lots of opportunity around what we can do with our people, lots of opportunity around our products um, moving forward. Um, and then also in our community, you know, we talked about the trades and we, mm -hmm. we talked a bit about um, folks just having opportunities in the tech industry. You know, I'm excited about how Thumbtack can help that you know, student who's in high school who doesn't feel like college is for them, they don't have trade you know, opportunities in their high school and they're just kind of feeling aloof. And I know personally that um, resources and having information and having someone to direct you at that point is so critical in the direction that a person's life goes in, right? And so we're yeah. really setting up some opportunities to um, be able to help, you know, hey, we have pros that are super um, successful at what they've done and they have all this great skill set. So, you know, we're thinking now, how do we connect them with that, again, high school student who's not planning to go to college and doesn't see a bright future because in their family, it's either you go to college and you're, you know, a doctor, a lawyer, or you're not doing anything. So we've got a great opportunity there um, as well as diversity suppliers. So we're here helping small businesses yeah. Absolutely. We've got to have a focus on making sure that the businesses we're working with also um, that we're contributing in that way. So, yeah, I think we're really thinking about DI in, in a more holistic way. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, it was such a pleasure, Deanna. Thank you very much for the conversation. I think the audience is uh, going to walk away with some 
so just like great insight into how they can take advantage of this opportunity post COVID and, and post, um, you know, Black Lives Matter and, and the, the outcome of that, right? And the conversations that are necessary that we're having now. So thank you so much for, for being on the show. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure uh, speaking to both of you. And again, like I said, I know that we could um, we could have these conversations for, <laughs> about oh, a, whole lot, a lot of other topics <laughs> as well. So I appreciate you all thinking of me and having me join. And uh, yeah, I, I, I love what you're doing with your podcast and anything we can ever do to contribute over at Thumbtack, let us know. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us again, the Higher Future Podcast. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.